in uh, 2005, uh, we decided we wanted to round out our family with another little girl from China. Summer 2005 turned to winter. Four and a half years later, we're still waiting for a little girl from China. And um, we started to get the sense maybe God is leading us in a different direction. I've Bodhi's seen Bodhi's profile online. I thought, huh. <laughs> and, and then I showed Dan. I said, what do you, what do you think? We looked at Bodhi's profile and it was not quite immediate, but it was pretty close. I felt that this is the child, you know, our son. So God intended for him to be in our family. We're home one week and Sid says, you know, Mom, I really love Bodhi, but I still want a baby sister from China. And I was like, oh, really? I said, you know what? Mommy's done. I'm good. We've got four. And she's like, please. Yep. <laughs> and I said, you know what? You're going to have to talk to God on this one because Mommy's good. I'm done. That was kind of her first <laughs> mistake because once your child teams up with God, then it's all over. Yeah. For Sid to, you know, a week later say that she wanted sister still, um, I just wasn't really open and receptive to that at that point <laughs> a week later. But as the weeks passed and we moved into September, there were so many events that came along that it became really quite clear. I think God was laying the groundwork on my heart to be open to doing this adoption. It was probably four months later that I think I finally cried uncle. You know, I'm in the kitchen with God and I find myself having a dialogue with the Lord saying, all right, but you know what, Lord? I'm not a good enough wife. I'm just not a good enough mother. I'm not enough. And um, him almost audibly saying, but I am enough. And that's when I realized that this is bigger than us. You know, it's um, a small thing to do in comparison to what Christ did for us. And when I put it in that context, it makes it really, you know, quite a privilege to be asked to care for all of our children, but to add another one of these into the equation. Looking at some photos, and uh, Sid was looking over my shoulder, and she's like, Mom, what about her? What about her? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. She grabs the phone. She gives it to Dan, and Dan's like, yeah, I think we should contact them. <laughs> so that really began the process of inquiring about her. Monday, I got an email back from Dana, our, our agency, and she said, you know, Val, I looked on the list. She's not there. Um, I said, okay. And I think the whole sense was that if she was meant to be part of family, the only way that that would happen is that, is that God would have to bring her back to us. So Tuesday rolls around, and I call them to make sure they got all the paperwork that we had faxed in. And as I'm talking to Dana, our, um, our adoption advocate, it's like a 20-minute conversation into it. And then suddenly she says, Valerie, you won't believe this. She's back on the list. I said, what? What? <laughs> I'm like, are you sure it's her? Are you sure it's her? And she said, yes, it's her. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm like, you know what this means? This means that God, that she was always meant to be part of our family. And so right then and there, she types in the necessary information and locks her in. And that began the step of bringing number five home. So the approval came in December and in January, we started thinking about how are we going to pay for this? And you know, we had planned to just save up and then get a home equity, home loan. equity loan made sense. Everybody gets home equity loans. Right, but even with excellent credit, they are not handing out home equity loans like they used to a few years ago. Yeah. So that was in this past January. In May of this year, Valerie started taking Financial Peace University, the Dave Ramsey course at High Point Church. A couple couple classes into the course, I realized that you know, funding your adoption through credit cards was probably not the best idea. Plan and reserve was to tap into our 401k. <laughs> Two weeks later, class was on retirement accounts. Guess what? You're not supposed to borrow from yourselves. You're not supposed to touch your retirement accounts. When all of the borrowing options seemed to be taken away, then I felt like we were kind of chasing our tail. I think we thought we were in control. Yeah. You know, we had said that we were giving up control of everything, that it was all God's. But somehow when it came to the finances, I think it made us just realize that we were holding on tight, you know, and felt like we could always do it on our own. We did it with the last two adoptions um, with Sydney and Bodie and thought we can do this in our own strength. And um, I think God really used this time 
to make it really clear that he was going to take the lead, and especially since this was his idea from the beginning. And um, it was a really an eye-opener, very humbling to have happened. So one of the leaders at Financial Peace mm -hmm. approached you. She knew our situation, and she had contacted Dave Ramsey. And she had mentioned an organization called Both Hands, where mm -hmm. um, an orphan's family teams up with a widow, and you bring the two together to do this project for a day. People will be allowed to come alongside us and help support our family as we provide support for a widow. And by having those two come together, like in James 1.27 when it talks about widows and orphans, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to be blessed, for the widow to be blessed, and then for the people that get to help out with the project to be blessed. I think that initially the idea of fundraising kind of freaked me out <laughs> because um, for some people it's kind of hard to ask for help and I think that's kind of where we found ourselves, you know, um, but realizing that that's where the body of believers kind of comes in. But this project is so awesome because um, it's a twofold thing, you know, um, it's kind of like a walkathon or race for the cure type thing where people sponsor you, but it's a workathon. Mm -hmm. And um, we get to bless and encourage somebody else who's going through some pretty tough times as well. And the focus is really on this widow. And you get to bring a bunch of people together who, you know, love the Lord and want to make a difference. And this is such a great opportunity to do that, that it kind of took the burden off. It made us feel like the focus was back where it needed to be, right. and that was back on God.